Are physics majors unemployable? Well, if you look at this chart, which I'll put up on the screen, you'll notice that the unemployment rate for a person who had a physics undergraduate degree was 7.8% in 2023, and nearly 68% of those people also had a graduate degree in physics. Now, when I looked at this chart the other day on X, it resonated with me because I was in that pool of people in 2023. For some context, I have a bachelor's, master's, and a PhD in physics. My PhD was conferred in June 2023, and I started my job at NASA Ames Research Center as a data scientist in October 2023. So for four months, I was contributing to that 7.8%. And I think when people look at this graphic, there might be some confusion as to why is physics so up there in terms of in terms of unemployment with things like sociology, chemistry, commercial art, graphic design, anthropology. Why would physics be in that category? Now, I only have my anecdotal experience to draw from, but having done those three degrees in physics and studying it and being in a university setting for 10 years, I think I have some idea as to why these numbers are not as shocking as they may seem at first glance. I mean, when I first looked at that graphic, I thought to myself, that's sad, but I am not totally surprised having lived the unemployed physics graduate lifestyle for a couple of months. And in this video, I really wanna cover what it is about the physics major itself in college that kind of lends itself to numbers like this, as well as the kinds of individuals who study physics and what their motivations and goals are and why it might be hard for them to land jobs outside of the field of physics. And I'll also conclude this video with what I would do now if I was an undergraduate physics major like I was 10 years ago. First, let's talk a little bit about the physics major. Now, when I was studying physics in college, I remember being told how versatile physics was and how well-rounded physics students are. And I agree with that. I agree that physics students have the capability to do other kinds of work outside of physics, such as engineering or tech or, or finance. But the major itself doesn't lend itself to you becoming an expert or becoming proficient in those other subjects. That really falls on you to have to do that. If you study physics and you decide not to work in physics, then there probably is just something better for you to study and major in in college. And that's just kind of the harsh reality in the sense that when people are evaluating candidates for a job from these different industries in, in the private sector, they're gonna be looking for people who have demonstrated they know something about banking or software engineering or data science. And while physics is the underlying subject or the subject that teaches us about the underlying nature of reality, the truth of the matter is while people may find that impressive, they're not going to jump at hiring you unless you can demonstrate you can do the job itself, right? That they're, they're hiring you to do. In that regard, the physics major is a little bit narrow. And I think that is a weakness of it and hurts the students of that major, especially if they haven't worked on side projects or built a portfolio or done an internship in another subject that is more aligned with what they want to do as a job at the end of the day. And I think, honestly, that's a reason as to why a lot of people in physics go on to get a graduate degree, because it is pretty hard to land a job as just a, a bachelor's in physics, at least from what I saw when I was in college. Now. At the graduate level, too, you also have this problem where you get very narrow with physics. And to be honest, there isn't a lot of places where you can do pure physics kind of work outside of a university, a national lab, an observatory if you're into like astronomy or astrophysics. Those three places in my mind really are the main places where pure physics, and by being pure physics, I mean you're going to be doing things that involve solving differential equations or carrying out laboratory experiments and, you know, setting up your, 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 your bench and your optics, you know, equipment and stuff like that. Those are really the only places, I should say, that that can actively happen. And so if you're not planning to work in a role that involves that kind of skill set, 
then as I mentioned before, there is definitely a easier path to getting the job that you have. Like for me, my data scientist job, I love it. You know, I really like being able to do data science and I'm doing it at NASA Ames Research Center. But the truth of the matter is that I don't need my physics PhD to do this job. In fact, I work in the earth science division at NASA Ames. I didn't study earth science in undergraduate or graduate school. And so I think when I came into this role, I had to learn a lot of new terminology, learn a lot about you know, earth observation uh, sensing systems. And uh, I was really you know, determined to learn that stuff. But if I was going to do this job right out of you know, college or out of a master's degree, I probably should have just studied something in the earth sciences. And so while physics is a quantitative subject, and yes, you can transfer a lot of that quantitative reasoning and math skill to another field, again, it's just a matter of do you know the other field well enough to pass a job interview and to convince your hiring recruiter if you know you can actually do the job. Next, let's talk a little bit about the personality of people who study physics. And again, as someone who did three degrees in it, I think I have a sense of what the kind of personalities of these people, including myself, are. I would say that most people who study physics, especially those who go on to graduate school, not always, but most of the time, have their eyes set on an academic position. I'll give you an example. When I was a first year in graduate school, I remember I was in a room with all the other first year physics graduate students in my year at UC Irvine. And the vice chair of the department was in the room and he was talking about something. And he, he asked us to raise our hand if we had our eyes set on being an academic, as in being a professor. And out of about 30 students in my first year, I would say somewhere between 20 and 25 of us raised our hands. So we're saying like, you know, two thirds and higher of in that room thought they were going to end up being a faculty member. The harsh reality is that really it's closer to something like 10 to 20% of people really get a chance to be a faculty at a university on a tenure track role after getting a physics degree. And so, it's a numbers game, right? And I think that if you really want to be a faculty member, you really have to, in my experience, have to sacrifice so much in terms of focusing solely on your craft and becoming a leading expert in your field and getting good at writing grants, writing papers, caring about your age index and all the things that academics care about. And if you don't like any of that stuff, uh, I think it becomes very difficult, and I, I, I experienced that firsthand where I, you know, I wrote a couple of papers in graduate school, and I just did not really enjoy doing it. And I think that what's hard for a lot of physics graduates is that they know they may not be happy where they are in like their graduate physics program, but they don't really know how to get out of it or how to transition out of it into something else. And so what would I do if I was in this position? I mean, I was in this position, but I was kind of towards the end of my doctorate program before I started to really rack my brain. It's like, how the heck am I gonna do something else? And so what I did do was uh, leading up to the completion of my PhD and the years, or the years, the months, I should say, uh, before I got my job, I was actively teaching myself skills on platforms like Coursera. I had bought a bunch of different books. I was teaching myself machine learning and coding better in Python to do data science. And so thankfully all of that kind of worked out. So now I have my current job. But I think the problem that a lot of graduates have is that they don't, they don't, know they should be doing that. Uh, no one's telling them to do that. And no one was telling me to do that either. I just figured this is probably a good thing for me to do. I think that people who go into physics who realize that they don't want to end up having a career in physics, there can be this sort of ego death that happens. And I had the ego death happen to me where it's like your whole identity is wrapped up in doing physics and and it's kind of all that you really know. And there's this fear or this uncertainty that you can pivot out of physics to do something else. And I find it surprising considering that a lot of physics people, again, are very well-rounded and have a broad skill set. 
And I think that what also contributes to this problem is that a lot of graduate programs and even undergraduate programs, I would say mostly graduate programs, are pretty guilty of making physics graduates feel at least a little bit uncomfortable about not being a professor in physics. I can't speak for all universities, but I definitely felt in my time in the academic system that there is this sort of academia or bust mentality. And it's kind of seen as a, oh, darn, like you're going to go into industry. That's too bad, you know, kind of feeling, which I really hope that we can change because the numbers are just not there for people to all become a physics professor one day. Like I said, there's only going to be around like, you know, 10 to 20 percent of physics PhDs who end up getting that coveted faculty role. Lastly, I want to touch on what I would do if I was a college physics major right now. Let's say if I was a sophomore or a junior or a senior in physics and I wanted to be employable. Looking back on my own physics major about 10 years ago, I would strongly consider double majoring or at least picking up a minor in something that is a little bit more employable is probably the better word for it. So when I studied physics at UC Merced 10 years ago, my minor was applied math. And I was happy I did applied math and it really helped me with my physics major. But if I could do it again, I think I would replace the applied math with either computer science or an engineering kind of discipline because I think the skills you learn in computer science or engineering just lends itself more easily to getting a job straight out of college than a physics major. And so I would at least minor in them. I would strongly consider double majoring in them if you really, really, really don't want to give up physics. Or if you're okay with physics not being your major, consider flipping them as in making an engineering your major and physics as a minor or computer science as a major and physics as a minor. I knew people who did that as well. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was an interesting one for me to talk about and I wish everyone the best if you are a physics major, or even if you're not a physics major who is having a hard time getting a job in 2025 because I, I was there in 2023. I, I was a part of that unemployed physics major group and so I would not wish that on anyone else. And I hope that this video can help you with your career and make the best decision for yourself. So with that, thank you. Stay tuned for other videos and I'll see you next time.